Hello, everyone. So, uh, just a quick fact. I didn't put the minions there. They are just attracted to darkness. <laughs> so, uh, so today is about uh, SFC compilation. So we would be trying to understand two important things. First is my Indian accent, and another is SFC compilation. Definitely one of them is simpler, and I bet it's the compiler. <laughs> OK, so uh, an overview. So just a quick overview. Like in the top left, uh, bottom left corner would be the title of what we are talking about. And this is the high level overview of what we are going to do today. Like the compilation process is basically three steps, like passing the SFC into blocks, then compiling each separate block, and then combining them all together. So I want you to focus on what and why. You can leave house on me and a uh, fat check. OK. So let's go with why do you want to know about SFC compilation? Uh, have you ever uh, written a component where just for testing you have to put an attribute like this, like data test, so that you can select this component and test it? But I'm pretty sure this particular attribute has no meaning in production code. So you just want to get remove this thing. So how to do that? You just want something like you write something like a template on left and it magically should remove data test. Cool, uh, we'll see how to do this thing today. Another thing is like basically uh, creating components with internationalization support right at the compile time. Like you can just magically write one component and it's converted to other language at compile time. Cool, we'll see that also today. So let's start with what is an SFC. Uh, it's basically an HTML file, but with a .view extension. It's almost similar to an HTML file. It has a script block. Uh, it has a template block where we write the markup, and it has a style block where we write the styles. Okay. So there are benefits of using an uh, SFC, like. One component is in one file. You don't have to juggle through multiple files to know what this component is doing. Plus, your styles are along with your logic, so that's pretty good. Then you can think uh, SF, each SFC component is a mini application which you can build in isolation and then merge it with your bigger application. Uh, and in theory, it's just HTML, CSS, and JS. Plus, you get choice of languages. Like if you want to use SAS, you can use that. If you want to use TypeScript, you can use that because SFC requires, uh, but uh, SF, browsers don't understand SFC. They understand JavaScript, they understand HTML, they understand CSS. So somehow we have to convert this SFT to either to HTML or JavaScript or CSS. Uh, I guess JavaScript is the thing which can handle uh, both HTML and CSS. So we'll convert everything to smug of languages to JavaScript. So technically, we are compiling stuff, but to be correct, like we are actually transpiling stuff. We are taking one language and converting to another JavaScript language. So when I say convert, compile, transpile, I mean transpiling an SFC to JavaScript. Cool. Let's start with our compilation process. So step one, pass SFC to blocks. So there would be lots of code today, and you don't have to look at it. Just Understand the process. <laughs> so passing SFC into blocks. Cool. So we get an SFC. Uh, we give it to the parser. And it gives us an object like this. Like it has style at index 1 is the style and its content. Then it has a script. Uh, it's the content. And then template and its content. What it gives, like it takes the SFC and Con gives us an object where we can work on indivisible uh, blocks one by one. So, how to do that? Uh, use view template compiler 
pass component and it just gives you blocks. Cool. Done with step one. We have the blocks. So let's start compiling script. So compiling script is more straightforward. You see a block of script, you take the script and put in a JavaScript file. Script compilation done. Okay, let's say there's no script in that component. What we do then? We just create, uh, we just export an empty object. Cool, uh, script compilation done. <laughs> okay, let's go to style compilation. So, uh, we again take the style, con content of style. So this JavaScript would be, uh, at runtime, what we'll do, we'll create a DOM element style and put all the content of the style block as its text content and append it to a head. Style compilation done. Okay. Uh, let's go to the most notorious of all three, compiling the template block. So it's not that much pretty for, uh, straightforward. So it requires a process. It requires multi-step process. So before going to that, let's compare it to its evil twin, JSX. So uh, JSX and templates, they try to do exactly same thing. They try to allow us to uh, represent our component logic in a declarative way, but they are inherently very different. Like JSX extends from JavaScript, so it's pretty flexible. You can write your logic in multiple ways. Like if you are rendering a list, you can do a for loop, you can uh, do a for each method, you can do, basically there are multiple ways to do the same thing. But in templates, it's inherently declarative. Like there is always one way you can write HTML. There is one way of doing almost everything. So JSX actually gives you a lot of power to the end users, basically to the developers. You can do anything you want to do, but templates give a lot of power to the build tools. Like compiler can do what any, uh, basically anything it wants to do. So purely from declarative point of writing components, flexibility is where you get Basically, where developers get into bike shading, like how to write a for loop. But in templates, you don't have to worry about this thing, like because there's only one way to write it. So, uh, for me, templates are for 95% of the time way much better than JSX. If there are very rare cases where I go with basically with JSX, very rarely. Cool. Huh. Just a quick look at uh, what we are going to compile in templates. So. We have expressions like this yeah, called string interpolation, where JavaScript variables and expressions are put in directly in text. Then we have for loops. We have event binds. We have proper uh, attribute bindings. We have conditionals. But if you see everything, it's basically there are two things, either interpolation or directives. So this is how the compilation, uh, template compilation process looks like. We take the template, parse it, convert to a intermediate representable state which compiler can understand and do its magic on it. Then it does some stuff which you don't want to see and gives you a render function. <laughs> cool, so let's see the step one, parsing. So we have this pretty little small component here. Uh, it has a div one class attribute, uh, a children with text and some interpolation in it. So when you pass this thing, it gives an, an AST. So AST is like a blueprint of this template we have written here. Uh, it represents the tree in nodes and in form of a tree. Like at the root level, we have div. So this is a div tag. It has some attributes, class greeting, uh, then it has some children. For us, it's text. Again, this text has some interpolations which uh, compile and it denotes as tokens. So it has a string hello and uh, a binding name and after that a uh, explanatory symbol. Cool. So we have the, an AST. So now we have to convert this thing to a render function. Ooh. So, uh, let's make it a little simpler. Uh, remove the stuff which is not necessary. Okay, so basically it's taking h from this dot create element, 
yeah, and doing something, uh, make it a little more simpler. Oh, good. So we have create element, which we generally use H, uh, short for hyperscript. So it calls a create element with div, all its headers, and all its children. Nice. So basically have compiled a template into a render function. Yeah. Done. All we have to do is just combine them all together into one big JavaScript file. Cool. So let's revise. Uh, started with passing the block in, uh, SFC into blocks. Okay. After that, after that, we compiled the script, which was just copy pasting it to a JavaScript file. Then we compiled style, which was like creating a style element runtime, putting content in it, and appending to the document head. And then we compiled the template into a render function. Now let's combine it all. Whew. Cool, so let's take the script, create a variable script and put it there, okay. Uh, we copy paste the style compilation code as it is, cool. Then we take the render function and assign the variable render. Now what we have to do is we have to add the render function to script. So this is how you get a render function when you are writing templates. So every view file exports this script which has render function in it, in it and style injection code. Ah, I hope that was not that dark. <laughs> but yeah, you have a high level overview of how compilation works. Definitely there are many small details which, I, which I'm not putting it here, but uh, at a high level, this is it. You pass two blocks, you compile each block, and then you combine all them together. So we have transpiled to JavaScript. Now let's get back to the example where we're at testable components. Cool, we have our button back, okay, and we want to remove data test. Cool, let's do it. So when we compile this thing, it gives us a render function like this. It has some headers, which is data test. We don't want to keep this thing in our production code. Okay, remove it. Phew, gone. So how to do this thing? How to do this thing? So let's write a small function, uh, post transform node. So from name is like after parsing, we are transform transforming a node in AST. Cool. So we get a node, if ha it has atters, we filter the atter. If the name of atter is data test, we just remove it. And we repeat it for all the children. So this basically removes, uh, recursively removes all the uh, atters with name data test from uh, the AST. And how to use it in our application? You open a view.config.js. Hopefully, you are using Vue CLI 3. Uh, in config, you pull up view loader configuration, tap into options, and put our transform, post transform node there. Done. Okay. Another example, I want to go to, uh, another example is uh, compile time internationalization. So what I mean by this thing is we write one component. We change language and it should work. So if you see, when I'm changing the language, the compiled uh, output is changing. Like right now, the compiler is giving something which us in English strings. And when I change the language, ooh, it's changing. So where are we getting these strings from? So in SFC, you can put any kind of data. So I have created one more custom block I18 and, and provided all the translations here. Then I wrote another post transform node. This time I'm looking for node type two. So node type two are basically uh, children which are strings. And then I have written a helper function, find translations. So from context, it will get the file name and find these translations here. And Using some environment variable that would be the lang name, uh, basically language, which I'm setting here, it will pick up correct string and then set it on a text. So after that, uh, it, we have to repass the tokens because if you see this thing, 
we are providing interpolation in uh, our strings. So we have to repass this thing into expression tokens and we set it on the node. And we do it recursively for all the nodes. And we go back to the same view.config.file and put the transform node there. We can basically combine these, both the uh, post transform node together and put it here as well, yeah. Okay, this was good. So let's say you are writing tender function yourself. Uh, you wanna do something, but you don't know how to do it. What you can do is I can write something, a similar template. Uh, Wi-Fi, 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 Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what you can do is you can write uh, your template and put it in this website. You can look for the link. Uh, it's uh, template-explore.vjs.org. It gives you a corresponding render function. Uh, it has options like server render and cli uh, client-side rendering. So this is... <laughs> I sorry <laughs> doesn't work like that. <laughs> ah, ah, uh, we are towards the end of the talk, so let's just do a quick summary. So compiler is not very complex thing; it's just small, simple steps combined together to build a very complex tool, which allows us to have the kind of uh, developer experience we are having now. So if you look in these little parts of the compiler, they are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Also, you can override and extend compilation behavior. You can write post-transform nodes, plus there are multiple, uh, more APIs that you can use to hook into the compiler and do things which, you, which are not possible right now. With uh, basically the public API of template does not allow you. You can almost do anything. So, also, Vue CLI allows us to directly provide these transform hooks and uh, using uh, the config. And I'll say everything is possible with Vue and its compiler. So, what's new in 3.0? Uh, we are changing compiler behavior a little bit, so you get source map out of the box. So you can actually put a debugger on a line in template. So you can basically debug your temp no, templates. We are going to basically, uh, the code would going to be very uh, tree stackable, like it's using ES modules. So if you are not using, let's say, directives, so directive codes won't be there in your, uh, in your bundles. So the features of you we are not using, they won't be there in your uh, output bundle. Also, compiler can analyze your code and just basically bring in the features which you are using. Ha, huh, that's hit. So, slides are there here, uh, viewcon 19 compilersearchsh Also on my GitHub repository, znck slash talks, uh, my website, znck.dev, and I'm on Twitter at znck0. Follow me. Thank you. <laughs>